I'm sharing five ways to take the high road and remain unbothered in today's video. Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer L. Scott and I'm the author of Polish Your Poise with Madame Chic. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to take the high road. How do you keep calm and remain classy when you are in a frustrating situation or if somebody is trying to push your buttons or you're feeling triggered? That's what we're going to discuss today. The art of remaining unbothered. Today's video is brought to us by Skillshare. You will learn more about them at the end of the video. Tip number one on how to take the high road and remain unbothered is to be too big to care. <laughs> you need to be too big to care about this situation, this person who is trying to insult you or bring you down. In fact, you must be magnanimous. I'm going to define magnanimous for you. It means generous or forgiving, especially toward a rival or a less powerful person. This is the essence of taking the high road. Now, why are you dealing with someone who's a less powerful person? I'll tell you why. Even if they are your boss or someone who is of a higher rank than you, if they are using base tactics like insulting behavior or uh, immature behavior, they are lacking in consciousness and that is low level behavior. Okay, so they are less powerful than you. If you even realize this point, you are already at an advantage. Their maturity is lacking. So you must be magnanimous. You must be the bigger person and be too big to care. Now this does take some practice and I personally find that it takes a lot of self work. You must work on yourself to get to this point. If you have a low self-esteem, this might be difficult for you to think of yourself as being too big to care. But truly, it doesn't matter who you are that's watching this. It doesn't matter what your age is, what your net worth is, what you do for a living. I want you to think of yourself as being too big to care about the fact that someone is insulting you. Now, this doesn't mean that we're just doormats and we let people be terrible to us and we don't do anything. That's not it. You'll learn as we go on through this video that this behavior of taking the high road allows you to ultimately win. Tip number two on how to remain unbothered and take the high road is to repeat the following affirmation. None of these things move me. If this sounds familiar to you, it's from Acts chapter 20, verse 24. And St. Paul said this when he was going through some major storms. But it's one of my favorite things to say. I say it out loud or I'll say it in my head when I find myself in an extremely stressful situation where I'm wanting to act out and not maintain my composure and my poise. None of these things move me. I even shared this with a good friend of mine and when we see each other <laughs> during the week, we start laughing and we say, well, this happened and this happened, but I just said, none of these things move me <laughs> and I was able to get through it. And it's true, there is something wonderful about this affirmation. So if you find yourself in a stressful situation where you seem to not be able to see out of it, you know, or if someone is just, maybe someone at work has been on you all day or, or really causing trouble with you, just say in your head, none of these things move me. This really helps with number one, to make you feel too big for the situation. Magnanimous. Tip number three on how to take the high road and remain unbothered is to not magnify the problem with your attention. I'm going to read a quote here. It's from William James and he said, my experience is what I agree to attend to. I'm going to repeat that. My experience is what I agree to attend to. So what do you want to attend to? My key takeaway with this is that you are in control of the experience that you have. So if someone is down here trying to drag you down with their bad behavior, are you going to really focus on this? The more you focus on them and their bad behavior and what they're saying to you and the more upset you get about it, the more you get dragged down by the situation. You wanna remain up here, this is the high road, okay? <laughs> so if you remain up there, you must not dwell on it. You must not um, fixate on this problem. You must keep your mind high and elevated. So the best way that I find to do this is to immediately forgive them. 
immediately forgive them in my head, in my heart, like legitimately. And it's hard. If someone does something to you or says something to you and you feel anger toward them, the last thing you want to do is forgive them and ask God to bless them, right? <laughs> Honestly, it's the last thing I want to do. But just trust me on this. When you do that, you immediately you forgive them. You have charity toward them. Then you can free up your mind to think about lovely things. Okay, but when you dwell on it, when you put so much attention on this problem and you fixate on it and you tell everybody about it and it becomes this big thing, then that is what you are attending to. That becomes your whole experience. A lot of the time when you give a lot of attention to this person who's trying to bother you, they actually like that because they know that they're bothering you. So when you remain unbothered truly, you just forgive them, you move on, and they can't get to you, they leave you alone and then they go bother someone else. <laughs> so don't magnify the problem with your attention. Tip number four is to remember that when you retaliate in anger, you only hurt yourself. There's the famous line in Henry VIII by William Shakespeare that says, heat not a furnace for your foe so hot that it do singe yourself. You must remain nonplussed. What's the definition of nonplussed? Unperturbed. Don't be perturbed by this situation or this problem because when you retaliate in anger, you singe yourself. You don't singe the other person. In fact, like I mentioned in the previous tip, they're probably happy that you got so mad. I know this from experience. When you react in anger, you do not look good. In fact, you come off as the bad person when they're the one that did the thing that started it. Also, typically, the people who are causing trouble never see your side and never will. You should give up on trying to win them over. Simply do not react and don't singe yourself with anger. For tip number five, I saved my favorite for last and that is a quote by Florence Scovel Shin who said, your ships come in over a calm sea. Don't you love that? So remember, when you remain calm, you come in on top and things start working in your favor. Your ships come in over a calm sea. In this case, your ships represent what you want. And I'm assuming that what you want is peace. Peace can only come in over a calm sea. If you picture the ocean and you picture turbulent waves and a big storm, your ships cannot come into the harbor. It needs to wait until everything is calm. So if you want to get what you want out of the situation, which is peace, and happiness and moving on with your life, you must maintain a calm sea. And I hope that that expression helps you because it has helped me greatly in my life. Whatever you want from this situation or situations like this will only come about when you are calm. This may take many years of practice and it has for me, but once you are and once you fully grasp this, it will happen. So let's recap the five ways to take the high road and to remain unbothered. Tip number one is to be too big to care. Tip number two, repeat the affirmation, none of these things move me. Tip number three, don't magnify the problem with your attention. Tip number four, remember you only singe yourself when you act out in anger. And tip number five is to remember that your ships come in over a calm sea. I hope that this video gave you inspiration to keep calm and remain classy in your own life. Let's do this together. How much does the world need this? <laughs> and now a word from our sponsor. So you know that sophisticated people are always learning and Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. You can invest in yourself and your personal growth. They have classes on everything from creative writing to art and craft tutorials, journaling classes, video editing. I recently took a food plating course that was very interesting. And then I had the idea to see if they had chess lessons on Skillshare because I never learned how to play chess and the kids really want to learn, Ben already knows. But we wanna take an online class on Skillshare. So we're going to be taking this beginner chess class by Arnie Collar, how cool is that? So the first 1000 people to use the link in my description box and my code, The Daily Connoisseur, will get a one month trial of Skillshare. Thank you for joining us for today's video. For more inspiration, check out my etiquette book, Polish Your Poise with Madame Chic. And in the meantime, keep calm and remain classy, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.